Surprise! <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Sean and Lacey and Dave live right here on john and lacy live hey welcome everybody you guys know what to do let's make sure that we spring into action we've got to subscribe hit that subscribe button give us a like if you're happy that uh david Meltzer is here today and share this what a special treat we've got david Meltzer here share let everybody know this is your opportunity to ask questions lacy is on the q a super pumped up dave thanks for joining us Are you kidding me i wouldn't rather be anywhere we're here in las vegas and i heard you guys are going live and i can't help but join my two faves live and i'm thinking about doing our own show well yeah. you keep the day the sean and lacy but we'll figure out a show with all three of us what do you think i think that would be killer right. people would love to see that <laughs> start rolling in and it'll be great because everybody will be able to interact we'll bring people on live it will be fantastic just like this just like it's like a little preview little preview it's of little the show. Preview, yes. So we make got, sure you ask questions. All right, everybody. We got 14 people the watching. Three amigos. That's what we should call it. Oh, call it the three amigos. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tell your what friends. You hey, don't forget that we're giving away $300 tonight. $300 going out. That means we're drawing three names from the digital canasta. We have everybody who's in Black Diamond Club and everybody who's in the Book Yourself Solid Network entered in for tonight's drawing. We're drawing three names. Don't forget that you have to be present to win. So test out your chat. Make sure that you're working. You know, got you guys know how it works. We draw your name. You got 30 seconds. You got to let us know that you're here to claim your prize. If we draw your name, you are a winner. But you still got to claim the prize. Got to be on. All right. I always here. I always mess this up. What's up, Jack? What's up, Cat? What's up, everybody? Glenn. Bobby Delude, Natalie. Oh, Glenn said we could be the three amigos, and we could be the three goats. Like oh. Billy Goats Gruff, though. I don't know if I like that. The greatest of all time. I don't want to be a goat. You guys, guys I know what a goat is. I was just but, checking. But, you know, <laughs> <I> just... <laughs> all right. All right. Who's who's producing? Who, who do we think? I, I always mess that tonight. up. I didn't I do it this Sean time. Sean usually says it before you guys get to guess. Who is our producer for the evening? Give us your guesses. Tell us who it is. What do you think? James. Everybody thinks, Everybody it's, James. thinks it's James. Everybody defaults to James. Like, of easy course. pick. It's an easy. That's an easy pick. Yeah. All right, producer, show yourself. This oh. is oh. You guys. Look just so cat. you, just so you know, Luke is a cat man. <laughs> cat and man, those, do. Those are his his. Cats. Cat they, they, Luke. Yeah, didn't you commission an artist to get those painted? Hell yeah. Yeah, it was my, it was my, uh, <laughs> my cousin does does local art, so I was like, dude, draw our cats. There you go. <laughs> so there's the cats. Cats have joined us for the evening. So what's All going right. on in Indy? Naptown. What's up in Naptown? Man, it's not it's not the worst weather, but we're we're in like fall spring number two. Um but no, I mean, it's kind of a quiet Wednesday night. Definitely not like Las Vegas on the Strip, but <laughs> Combine definitely is the... Definitely not. The... Yeah. I definitely not. <laughs> combine. Is the Combine over? Is the Combine still going? No, I think it's over. It's over. Okay. It's over. You I didn't, I didn't hardly keep up with any of that, but it was cool seeing, like, I feel like it was the first time there was, like, people in the stadium. Like, you could just go in. Mm. Yeah. So. Pretty sweet. Watch them run. Well, yeah. good. What do we got for announcements tonight? Hey, let's uh, let's recognize our sponsor since we got Luki up there. Sponsored tonight's episode is being sponsored by Inherent Clothier. Go to www.thisisinherenttaylor. Yeah, there you go. Thisisinherent.com. My man Taylor, Dave's man Taylor. Taylor. Except for uh, uh, Dave now is Travis Matthew. So he wants us to make sure that we mention Travis Matthew. That's right. When we talk. But I love Inherent. Well. Yeah, Dave loves Inherent as well. I love Travis Matthew too. I love them both. Yeah, I saw some Travis Matthew. Yeah. I was going to take some pictures of some Travis Matthew today and tell Dave. Some great gear. And they just launched their ladies line. Shirt. Like ladies really line. launched it. And a new the shoe line. Ball. Yeah. Got so, away from the soft curator. Yeah. It's really nice. But you guys turned Julie on to 
G4. So she was trying to shop for me. I'm like, I need no clothes. I need, uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, Seriously. So you're going to buy some golf true. shoes for herself. Dave needs no clothes. We're used to seeing him with no clothes. <laughs> 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 you, have been, you have been blessed <laughs> to goes. see him with the shirt on tonight. Yeah, so. yeah, you're, you're, you're lucky. A little feature <laughs> peak here. <laughs> oh, oh, there's another oh, shirt. Oh, sweater. His shirt's covering oh. his sweater. Don't worry about it, guys. All right. What else we got tonight, Lukey? What are we, uh, what are we all about here? So we've got a big workshop coming up in Dallas um, we in oh, about oh. one week. Look who's going to be there, David Meltzer. I just spoke to Ryan Stuman today. We we're talking about what he's going to be presenting on. It's going to be absolutely sick. And then you have this same group right here. You've got uh, Dave, Sean, and Lacey, as well as Michael Port from Book Yourself Solid. We're dropping Book Yourself Solid for Chiropractors. Comes out at the workshop. Oh man, we're gonna be celebrating that. You guys wanna be there. Get your tickets now. I'm so excited. Everybody on the chat's excited. A lot of the people on the chat are gonna be there with us. Some of them for their very first time. So they're really pumped, so. And, and you uh, get to meet Dave in person. And you get to meet Dave in what person. What are you gonna talk and, about? Yeah. Whatever anyone, what, let's take a vote. I, yeah. will, that's, oh. I, I can talk about okay, anything. Was, okay, so let's take a vote. It's sales revenue profit. All right, you guys, what would you like Dave mm. to talk about? Yeah, this is your chance right now. I'm watching the chat. This is your chance to throw out some topics that you feel like you need to learn in your business when it comes to sales, revenue, and profit. Oh, see, first time for SRP. That's right. We've got the timer up. Jack said, thanks, Dave. Can't unsee that. Yeah. But <laughs> Jack said, chest, chest hair, hair removal, removal would be a great topic. Yeah, exactly. Like, chest kind hair of like, like 40 year old virgin, you know, where yeah. they like go and they do the I'll do that. Thing. You can shave my back on stage. <laughs> Uh, Ten all right, research. you guys, while you're thinking, I'll just keep watching the chat. Yeah. Uh, we'll give, give us some, some topics. Ooh, resiliency and recovery after loss. Ooh, Ooh. Ooh I like That's that. That's actually oh, a really good, a good one. Good one. Yeah. It's hard, and even from a sales perspective, yes. it's hard when you get in a rut, yeah. right? A lot of people feel like they get in that rut and they are, they, they can't recover. They can't get themselves out of that. We hear a lot of people say that, like, oh, I just can't convert. Anymore. Joanna's first time being on the live too. Congratulations, oh, Joanna. Welcome. Great to see you here. What Perfect. else we got up there, Luki? So SRP, everybody make sure you've got your tickets. Um, what do we yeah. got? I think we got a crew 52 or what, what do you got for us next? Yeah. So this is what I'm excited for you to talk about. So. I mean, for those people who don't know, maybe intro what Crew 52 is all about, and then we can announce who our first, um, I don't know what we want to call it, our first spotlight is. So take Crew it away members. with what Crew 52, our collaboration. Yeah so, yeah, so we were super excited to launch Crew 52, the Black Diamond Club collaboration network. The premise is very simple. What would happen if we took 52 people and once a week we spotlighted one person? And the other 51 people, we shared them in our circles, we email list, we engage with their content, we push them into our social media, we push them on Sean and Lacey Live. What if they got a, a special push from us and everyone it's else? Concentrated amplification for that individual. And it's true collaboration, yeah. right? Yep. Because in order to do this, I have to realize out of the entire year, one week will be me. And the other 51 weeks of the year, I'm going to spotlight someone else who I actually might not even know mm -hmm. other than I'm connected through the community. So that's what Crew 52 is. I think that we have maybe six spots, spots left. Um, six these are spots undoubtedly only. going to fill up at SRP. But if you want in right away, you've got to get with Natalie Science. She's captain of Crew 52. And we're launching it this week. And the first spotlight is? Show us your spotlight. Who is it? Oh, Jackie, oh, Vaughn. Jackie Vaughn. I hope Jackie Vaughn Vaughn okay. tonight. Can I share a quick uh, absolutely yeah. put on the crew 52 yeah. Leave that up there. Leave that up there in, for a little bit. In Africa, they use the same concept called the merry go round. Oh. And what they do, because it's so far to get ahead. And the idea of collaboration and the exponentiality of everyone helping one person. Mm. So think about it financially in these poor tribes, the mamas. They do everything, mm -hmm. but they can't get ahead. So everyone makes about a dollar a day uh, in the tribe. Yeah. And so one person gets the windfall every month. So everyone takes one day of their work, a dollar, oh. and they give it to one of the mamas. Same exact concept, but instead of information sharing and platform and that windfall, then that person buys like a, a cow 
or they buy a brick, like one of the ladies bought a cement mixer and, wow. and then another one and they start businesses and this tribe that started it, the merry-go-round, your crew 52 concept, just so you know, and I bet you it happens with what you're doing became the most wealthy tribe from the windfall because they never could get ahead. Mm. And now just sacrificing one day of their income and putting it on one person, the, everyone it raised everyone's awareness. And I was just watching thinking, wow, that's going to raise everyone. It's going to, that 52 tribe is going to have the most value and because you're not going to lose the collaboration once your week's over. No, and well, not even that. Like I think about the tribes, so their their purchasing power, right? They take that money, they probably purchase something like a cement mixer, and then she utilizes it to generate more revenue for the tribe because now they can do work and more right? value for the and tribe and more right? value. So we also probably, as we get this going, can be we'll begin to understand how we can create further value that we're not even thinking about now, which I think is super powerful. So six spots left. If you want to be part of the Crew 52 tribe and you want to be elevated, make sure that you let us know. I think that that's super, super Jackie powerful. Jackie says she's here. Hi, Jackie. Everybody's shouting out Jackie already. Even I don't know if they're all in Crew 52, but yes, yeah. to your point, um, everybody will benefit from this. Um, there is, and so, so cool. I want to shout out Natalie. Natalie she did yeah. such an amazing job prepping sure. all 52 members. Um, so it's not left to chance. They have really cool media kits that Natalie helped them to develop so that we have the resources so that the other 51 members have will be able to, to share. share. Right. And so, yes, well, this is she says, be like, she says exactly hard. like, here's who I serve. Here's, well, here's what I do. Here's who I serve. And here's how you can help me. So it's like, they need to know how, mm -hmm. like, they can even shout them out or do anything. And obviously, like you were already saying, it works both ways because you're incentivized to shout out someone else so that obviously when it becomes your turn, like you want everyone to shout out you. Do the same for you. Yeah. Yes. I want to say that too, like Jackie's in Michigan and people don't understand, like we might meet someone tonight in Las Vegas who needs a chiropractor in Michigan. Oh, for yeah. sure. And people are always like, oh, I don't know why I would do that. I'm a chiropractor in Michigan or I'm a massage therapist in, in Oklahoma. Why would I do that? Well, because... The world is small. The world right. today is super small. And people travel. I just, we're doing a VIP dinner here, yep. but the one we're doing in Orange County next week, uh, I accidentally put Orange County. So there's Orange County, Florida, Orange County, New Jersey, ah. Orange County, <laughs> California. And one of my New York friends, the head of Morgan Stanley Sports and Entertainment, I haven't talked to him in a while. He calls and emails me, hey, I wanna go to your VIP dinner because we invite everyone across the country and some of the people that work with me are like, well, just do it regionally. Yeah. No one's going to come from New York. Well, what happened was he's traveling, of course, to California, hasn't seen me in a while. And the value of having him at this dinner with all these people. So I just ask. And yeah. if they, who knows where their relatives live, though? Right. Yes. right? You, you hear these stories at dinner. Oh, my aunt so and so, she has a bad back. Oh, where does she live? Oh, Kalamazoo. Oh, yeah. Southfield, Bloomfield Hills. It all happens. The time. And if you're not asking, do you know anyone that can help me? You're missing out on about a thousand times the exponential amplification of opportunity. I love it. Do I have any more announcements? <laughs> we do have another request for Dave. Can you talk about sales objections and the mindset around that? That love could that. also be a good That's, one. And too. that ties into resilience and the yep. disappointment. There you go. Make sure we uh, codify these because I will come prepared. Yep. I got. I have to admit, a little can illumination. Can you write those down? Oh, sorry. Yeah. I got a little too loosey goosey on the last BDC one. I was like, <laughs> oh shit, I'll just get up on stage and talk whatever the F I want. And I like afterwards, I'm like, that wasn't my best work. And so I'm, you're I'm if hot. you're coming, especially the new, you know, Book Me Solid group, yeah. you are going to see Dave Meltzer at his super best, prepared. I'm doing research on your topics and I'm going to bring there new, new thought and new content. Not the same story about the jacket. I promise <laughs> is that all the announcements Luke that's all we got so get into uh get into tonight's topic yeah all right so super excited it's a great topic um we've talked about this before the three of us in in various um venues I, I believe in one of our courses even mm -hmm. we talked about this um, tonight we're talking about competition versus collaboration and so let's start first with competition like sort of this nasty word but also mm -hmm. a, a disempowering word. 
a lot of people are very concerned with their competition. Like, oh, my competition. I'm very worried about my competition. I got to see what my competition is doing. They spend so much time worried about the competition. How do you guys view competition? Well, first, I, I saw this thing that Alex Hermosi posted, give credit where credit's due, right? And he was talking about um, comparison syndrome. But I think the same thing applies here. And he was saying, it's not the actual comparison syndrome, like looking at somebody else and saying, oh, they have something I don't have. I, I, would, I would like to have that. How come I don't have it yet? He said, it's the judgment around it that you pass on yourself. And so I think the same is true with competition. Competition can be a good thing. It can be a good driver. It could be a good force, but it's the judgment around around it that we put on ourselves that I think is detrimental. Like that they're ahead of me. I have to fight for that. I have to, right? I'm not good enough. Why do they have it and I don't, right? It's those feelings that I think make competition bad when competition can actually be a good driver. Yeah, I like that. Competition is important. If you if you were in sports and you had no competition, then you would really never know where you, you could stood. never. It actually makes me think of you because you talk about this in golf all the time. And I don't know if this is men, if this is just an excuse or it's the truth. But you always say, oh, I play to the level of what other people are playing oh, at. All the time. So <laughs> play the level so, of your competition. If, so if you had, life, if he, if he life, played, yeah. if he played bad, it was their fault. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But you know what I'm saying? Like you, play, you play to the level of others. And if there's no other level, then you're just going to be mediocre at best. Yeah, and I'll get to the competition in, as well as the comparison side. But I think it's important because one of the new nuances that I am teaching is I'm very aware per subject matter, topic, or expertise, which could include a sport. Sure. Like I play golf now as well because Miles is playing. I would much rather be the sixth man on a better team because I find a lot of the topics and subjects, I'm the, I'm the point guard on a not so good team. Mm -hmm. And that's the idea of playing down to the level. So yeah. if you're the point guard on a team, look to see maybe of being a six man on a higher level team, a better, higher frequency or awareness or expertise, right. like playing golf. Um, it's interesting because competition, a few questions come to mind. I believe comparison is the thief of joy. Mm -hmm. That's different than competition. Mm. And that's what Hermosi is saying when he's talking about the inherent judgment mm -hmm. in comparison. In comparison. Yeah. Um, competition is interesting because I think it's important when we are participating in a competition with others that we make ourselves equal. Mm. And then we compete within ourselves to make ourselves better. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important. People get confused and they get, uh, I think, also uh, conflicted on, well, I'm competing in a game that makes me better because I'm playing a better team. Mm -hmm. Only if your goal is in the co competition, my competitor. So if we're playing golf, I want to make myself equal first. Mm -hmm. So I don't put you down. I'm only looking for the best in you. Then I'm competing with myself to make myself better. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a really great way to compete. Obviously, people say you only compete against yourself. Right. I disagree. I think you can make yourself equal in a competition and then compete with yourself to make the delta, to make yourself mm. better. And when you take that perspective, you find less dis-ease, less scarcity, less negotiation and trading and insecurity and judgment or conditions. When you say, look, I respect you so much. I'm going to make myself equal in this interview. I'm just trying to keep up. And then when I find myself equal, now I'm going to make myself better. Mm -hmm. Not better than you. Right. But if I'm already equal to you, then I know I can make myself, myself better. better. Mm -hmm. Who's liking this? Anybody in the They're chat liking, liking this? this? Yes. Yes. I love that. You know, I always say that your competition, for even to your point, your competition defines you. Yeah. Which is really, I mean, it, it's, it's what you are both yes. saying is that, the competition, if, if I even felt like, man, I, I'm, I'm the less of the three of us, you're saying I need to, I need to make myself equal, <laughs> need to make myself equal. And then, right. So the competition defines me. Right. And, and so if you guys are elevated, that's what defines me, but also I, it would require me in a moment. So in a, in a, in a minute and moment for me to understand that you guys are vibrating at a higher energy, you bring a, a higher expertise, mm. because that's the definition. I have to realize at some point that I have to make up that delta. If I'm going to make us equal, 
or or that I might be different. I might be ahead in some areas. And then also that defines me. So like you were saying, like, well, on the team, I'm the point guard. Well, because I'm shorter, but faster, you're taller, you you have you have different abilities, you have a different assignment. So even in that, like when I make us all equal, we still bring different talents. So right. the fact right. that you're super tall and you can dunk without jumping, that defines mm -hmm. you. And then that by by default. So I mean, even you know, Magic Johnson, I might be six foot ten, but still be the point guard because of everybody else in their role and how that ends up defining me. And that's why knowing your own skills, knowledge, and desire are so important because it's the skills and knowledge that determine where your basement is. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we pick the wrong area where our skills and knowledge are not aligned with being strong. So I use an analogy today at the meetup in basketball, if I was on the court, I have a very low basement, like you said, right. uh, in basketball. But if they move me up to the front office, I have an extremely high basement, mm. but none of it matters except for that competition within myself because it's the Delta that matters. And for example, in college football, my basement's so much lower. Even if I had the same Delta as a professor, Tom Brady, I would still be below his basement. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's Always, the Delta yeah. that matters. And do, I made a choice finally in my life, as much as I love football and the passion for football, I moved my skills, knowledge, and desire to something I had a much higher basement at. Right. Where like school, I got one B without trying yeah. because my basement's so high. Right. Yeah. And I bet you some Don't you think though, kids. even in competition, like it's so important that there's people that can show us what's possible. Right. And like, I think about the idea yeah. of competition and that if I'm in competition with myself, like which is what we want to do, but I'm also in competition with others, that's because somebody else has shown me what's possible that I haven't even dreamed of or known I could achieve yet. And so I feel like there's also a necessity around it. It's a four well. minute mile. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It, yes. Yeah. The yes. four minute mile. Two weeks after the four minute mile was broken, after scientists said it was humanly impossible to run that fast. Right. So after I'm going his name, ran the four minute mile, I think 12 people broke the tw within two weeks. Right. And there but so there was I, inherent competitive competition in that. They realized right? what's possible. It, they realized what's possible and then they were able to also break that record. So competition can be good. Any questions from the Any questions? The crew? Come on, They're crew. They're saying, I love that. Uh Op competitions opportunity to Roger grow. Bannister, of course. And also in Roger, Bannister. Roger Bannister. Roger Bannister, thank yes. you. But bringing the best out of people is also something in competition. Yes. Right? We can bring the best out of our competitor. Right. By showing them what's possible. Yes. By showing them maybe where their own self-image is limited. Yeah. When they see someone do something. Without that. They, that. Right. That they thought they couldn't do, like Roger Bannister and breaking the four-minute mile. We, yeah. we are... The reason why I won't be at the Masters is we're hosting our um, Bourbon Nights. I don't know if Luke has a Bourbon Nights curtain, but yeah. we're hosting Bourbon Nights. And Bourbon Nights, we go to this ranch. We go to we go to this ranch, and um, there's a, the, the man that runs the ranch, Larry. I don't Larry, know, Larry, 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 Larry. That's how he says his name. Larry's Larry. a Supercross um, motorcyclist. And he finished second to Travis. What's his name? Travis Mastrana. I don't know. Is that right? Yeah, right? Across. Anybody? Paul knows Travis Mastrana. Travis Pastrami. Pastrami? No. Pastrami? Pastrami? No. Pastrami? Pastrami? Like on the like charcuterie juniors? board? Like a junior? Pastrana. 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 The, the, the guy that won all the time. Larry finished second something like 20 times. Yeah. Like it's incredible. Like Phil like, Nicholson. Yes. Pastrana. But it's that same, that's the same thing. Yeah, Pastrana. Travis so, Pastrana. So you have you have Phil Mickelson pushing Tiger, and you have Larry push. Like so, there's somebody who's even like mm -hmm. who knows if Tiger would have been that competitive if he right. didn't always have to show up and beat the second place guy, even though right. the second place guy is not technically winning. He's not losing by ten strokes. Right. He's, he's right there. Yeah. He. Just, I mean, and, and the same thing. Larry was right there. He just always ended up second because he was pushing somebody who was taking that and taking that to the next level. Do you see that in sales? I mean, yeah, it, it's so interesting as a group when people look at me when I start a comp plan or a different campaign and they look at me like no one's going to sell that much, which is why if you're going to do so, that's why I sell every time to start. Like, I, I think it's really important to not just tell people, OK, our goal is 90 of these or whatever. Right. And when I started saying, OK, Cool. Let let just shadow me. Yeah. 
then all of a sudden they saw saw what was possible, possible. and they also saw how he did it. Yeah. You know, so I'm sure Larry is sitting behind Travis and he's watching how he takes a jump or where he, what angle he's taking as well, uh, yeah. or maybe even studying him afterwards mm. in film, which I've seen a lot of people do yeah. is study other people, which is why, for example, I study certain people, entrepreneurs, big fan of Walter Isaacson, who gives me that insight to give all the research of studying Ben Franklin, mm. Einstein, uh, Musk, Gates. These books are incredible because that's giving me that competition mm -hmm. within a, literally a theoretical character now, yeah. you know, that I'm not competing with, but in essence, I'm trying to make myself equal to what I think is a higher standard. Well, I think that's the key. Then you have to be able to utilize competition to pull out the best parts of you instead of highlight where you think you have deficiencies. And I think a lot of people go into competition and they feel deficient in something. And that's why there's like this whole negative connotation around it, because when you feel deficient, then you show up with the wrong energy, the wrong vibration, which is which causes problems in competition. But if you utilize it to pull out the best of you, then again, we're showing up with possibility. I want to go to collaboration, but I also want to share something I was just thinking about. So I haven't even told you this. Uh, we were at our Sherman College of Chiropractic board meeting and we brought in secrets? Tom Gilardi. <laughs> yeah. so like... Tom, Tom Gilardi, the founder yeah. of Sherman College. We brought him in to speak to the board about vision. And as he was sharing, he said something that blew my mind. And so last time that we were in Las Vegas, we did this little podcast and you asked me, who would I want to sit with, mm. if dead, dead or alive? Oh, yeah, and I said, cool. BJ Palmer. Well, Tom Gilardi, founder of Sherman College, shared with us that while he was in school, um, he spoke to Lyle Sherman, yep. big hero of mine. So he spoke to Lyle Sherman, Sherman College named after Lyle Sherman. And um, he said that Lyle revealed to him that at that time, so this is the 1940s in that, in that era, at that time, BJ Palmer was, was subsidizing Palmer College. Now, Tom said at the tune of $180,000 a month. Now we said maybe he in meant maybe he meant quarter. Yeah. Even if he meant year. Yeah. That's that, a lot. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot of money then. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah. So I money. even think when you were saying that, like, oh, I want to make myself equal, I I I think that's so great because I'm a big BJ Palmer study. Mm -hmm. But what we don't understand is how financially successful that man was as an entrepreneur, $180,000 a month, a month is what Tom said. That's, that's incredible. I wonder what that equates to now. That's like, yeah. that's a, somebody you know, do a quick calculation. You know what that. my jaw drop was thinking of that was, I forget where I was speaking a couple weeks ago, or even last week, I just mentioned, I was talking about giving and giving. And I said, you know, most people don't like to receive and you think because you're doing good, like I'm a big Palmer fan too, yeah. after you told me who he was and, my alignment with mm. chiropractic, chiropractic yeah. in, in the code, right? And most people Google this, you'll be amazed. Do you know what Mother Teresa's estate was worth when she died? I'm going to guess a hundred million. Over. Over a wow. hundred million. Like the person who walked the streets of Calcutta yeah. with yeah. a goal of giving everything she had away. If, if you don't understand money, why Palmer probably, it, I believe it was 180000 a month. Yeah, because I understand his relationship to energy. I like think he Absolutely. wrote the book on why he would have that money. Right. Yes, and it was not what he was looking for. It was the energy around it. And yeah. especially with doctors. And I know you guys deal with health providers and service providers, veterans we work with and at, it's amazing. It's your energy. That stuff will follow you. I could drop all the money in the middle of this desert and it will redistribute itself to the same mm -hmm. people. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Right. Let's talk. Absolutely. Uh, let's talk collaboration. Oh, 180,000 is four million dollars today. <laughs> That's like a, a month. month. A four yeah. million dollars a month. Can you imagine any as a doctor? As a doctor, yeah. Any any <laughs> chiropractor giving four million dollars a month to a school. Well, Tom also shared with us that BJ Palmer was a quarter. BJ Palmer yeah. owned the second radio station in the United in States. In the United States, yes. second radio station. Um, he employed Ronald Reagan. And wow. At one point, Ronald Reagan was doing the Chicago Cubs relay, right? So they were having the games and then relaying them on his radio station. He also created a bunch of stuff, though, too. Created Remember he created the TV stuff. tray that yes. separates your food because he was yeah. so particular? Oh, like the, He was so eclectic. Like the, I love him. TV dinners? Yeah. TV dinners, yeah. 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 He created he didn't that. Want it to mix. Yeah. I was like, he did the he TV the stand. stand. Oh, no. No, no. The TV I, remember that I call that the divorce yeah. dad stand. Well, I, I just eat those with my divorce dad. He, 
<laughs> right in front of the cash. The divorce dad stand. Okay, <laughs> click, I got nobody. Collaboration, collaboration. collaboration. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start with this because I, I yeah. know I'm going to just lead Dave into this. Everybody struggles with collaboration, not because our viewers are like, I struggle with collaboration, mm -hmm. but because it's hard to find people to collaborate with. So they're like, oh, and so they, they get, they watch this, they go out, they're so excited. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to collaborate. They go out and they do it. And then they report back like, oh, I was working with Lacey. And then like Lacey wasn't helping me. I ended up giving all into the relationship. Right. All my Lacey, time and energy. And then at the end it, it sucked. And now I hate collaboration because I, I did this and then I did it with this one and that one and, and collaboration, Sean, that's for the dogs. What do you say to people to encourage them? Yeah, I think you have to understand that a collaboration is an agreement mm -hmm. and it's a coordinated movement. And so it's an agreement of a coordinated movement. And the why so many people don't like it or fail in it is that the minute that we come to agreement, and we can talk about this at the event, um, verbal agreement, written agreement, or a collaboration, which is an agreement, time, value, and emotion changes. Mm -hmm. And we take a unilateral perspective of timing and risk tolerance Our at own. right at the time of agreement and so what i would and i will help suggest and teach is when we collaborate have a coordinated movement together an agreement on that movement together for a mutual benefit that we have to take into consideration one the time emotion and value that is constantly changing mm -hmm. in context to the alignment of the timing and risk tolerance of both of us because we're coordinating together. It's not a unilateral. See, if, if I have a normal sales agreement and I'm a sales rep, I may have my own timing and risk tolerance mm. and I'm not the company and that's isn't mm. going to thrive. It's going to eventually die, no matter what, how great of a coach you are, a consultant yeah. or advisor. So I have this go, no go plan, which I've taught before. Mm -hmm. The reason the go, no go plan helps us, it takes into consideration the changes of time value and emotion, it also inherent in it has the three no rule, which what? Three no rule allows you to change your mind and say no. Yeah. Because of the time in value and emotional change, this isn't a coordinated movement anymore. Mm -hmm. This is not an appropriate collaboration because we can't find mutual benefit anymore. Mm -hmm. Regardless of the ego that says, you promised yeah. to coordinate with me. Mm -hmm. You promised to pay me for this. Mm -hmm. You promise whatever it may be. Well, I did considering the time, emotion and value of the time and my timing and risk tolerance. The greater we pay attention and give attention to both people's timing and risk tolerance and allow for the change of time, mm -hmm. value and emotion, the greater the statistical success of collaborated, coordinated movement. I, that was like a big ha aha moment for me right now, because I, you know, a lot of people go into these collaborative partnerships and it's always like, well, you have to have clear, um, tr transparent conversations about expectations in the very beginning. I tell all my clients that we have to set up expectations, but I've never actually had them talk about risk tolerance with that other individual. And I think that that is where the breakdown happens because somebody says, hey, let's put this event together. Are you willing to do the work? Yeah, of course you say yes. Am I willing to do the work? Of course I do. But what does work mean? And maybe my idea of work and what needs to be done may be more risky to get people to come than what you're willing to do. And there becomes almost this inherent like resistance that and disappointment happens. and disappointment and then even resentment then, falls and then, and then, it then falls blame, apart. shame and justification. And then fall. you don't do the work. And, and then and you I don't do the work. A valuable relationship as well. Yes. Yeah. What are the people saying? They're not saying anything. Did we They're in awe. Stuff? They're in awe. So They're are, frozen in, in, in awe. So one of the key ingredients, this is what I thought Dave was going to say. One of the <laughs> key ingredients then to make that happen is that both parties have to have an open mind. Yes. So you talk yeah, about, it, yes. right? You talk about how do I find out how the other person has, if the other person is open-minded, but I want to, I don't know if you've ever talked about this. I've never heard it. How do I know if I'm open-minded? Well, first of all, remember, mm. everyone has an open mind some of the time. So we can take clues, patterns, and look and examine the choices that we made to determine how much time do we actually spend with an open mind. Or mm. maybe within the context of those patterns, where do I have an open mind and where don't I? 
So, for example, I have you know this amazing wife who talks about some of the most inappropriate uh, like politics, religions, and aliens. Um, so it's a difficult Amongst conversation. <laughs> yeah. But I, I'll be with someone that's a very open mind about this subject matter. But if you bring up abortion, or you bring up aliens, or yeah. so all of a sudden time, time, travel, mind, time yeah. travel. Yeah. So I think it's really important to look within and understand within ourselves not only the time that I spend having an open mind, because I will tell you one of the detriments in my life is I spend too much time with an open mind. Mm. So I have too many options, opportunities to touch as a favor. Mm -hmm. And so I need to qualify or vet to have a more closed mind, for example, when new opportunities come to me. I actually have to force myself to close my mind mm. and not look at beyond, I just don't have the time. Mm -hmm. So I think that self-analysis utilizing those criteria mm. helps us understand not only the timing, but also the subject matter or topic, because it's okay to have a closed mind. I don't want to talk about that. Right. Mm. It's yeah. okay to tell someone like that's, I don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. It's just a, it's waste a boundary of sometimes. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about you? What do you think? How did we know if we have an open mind? Well, I think it's just, I agree with what Dave said, but I think it's behavior, right? I think just alone, you can watch, watch how you react to things when mm. people say something to you even when you're not in a good mood and they may say something that maybe doesn't resonate with you are you are you always like resistant to that i think that you know if you have resistance to other individuals talking to you trying to engage with you have a conversation with you that may be against what your certain belief systems are i think that I, what about I think, people like you bring up a really good point yeah like i have people that because of past snapshots, I just have a closed mind. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Like, and, yeah. and sometimes I prejudge them and I've lost opportunity mm -hmm. because I'm getting on the phone with a closed mind going, this guy's full of shit. I, I already know, do. yeah. And yeah. sometimes mm -hmm. they're not. Yeah. Like, what if or they did changed. that to me? Or they've changed. Because right? like my own siblings, right? I know that and when I say they, they, they literally see an 18 year old in front Absolutely. of them and I'm 56 and they have mm -hmm. a closed mind towards me because they just see the bullshit in everything I say. Mm -hmm. I, I, you, you talk about, about that a lot, that yeah. a lot of people, and maybe you, you know, they hold on to the past version of you. Yeah, they, yeah. They're holding on. They're stuck with the past version of you and yeah. we're all dynamic. We're all growing. Mm -hmm. Some of us growing in a positive way, others are growing in a negative way. So it can work in reverse. Yes. Right. Like, oh, I love doing business with so-and-so. They've always done me right. And then all of a sudden, because of their timing and risk tolerance, they're at a different spot. Desperate good people do desperate, desperate things. things. Yes. 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 And then you're that's shocked, dangerous. right? But you're like, oh my God. have to understand that's human nature, right? For them to be stuck in this past version of you and have that snapshot because they haven't been along for the ride to experience your growth. Right. Some of them have been, but not not actively right just because people are in your life doesn't mean they're actively participating or understanding your growth and i think that's where as humans it's difficult for us because my mom may be in my life my brother may be in my life but they're in a, a different uh mm -hmm. circle but i have to add one thing because this happens to me and yeah. I, I just being vulnerable I'm sorry. weirdly enough sometimes i've made all this change then I go to some family function. And you go back to the I revert being we, we all do that. Oh. Yeah, it's the worst. And you're like, oh, there's little Lacey again, troublemaker. Yeah. There she is. Right. Yeah. And I hear myself oh, my say brother. things going, yeah. that is not me anymore. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. But I have reverted right back into the frequency that they expect mm -hmm. from me. And that one was really difficult for me. It's Why all, do you think that happens? It's embedded in our neurology. Yeah, well, you know, someone said this great line. You know why it happens? Because it's not just that the people that you're with know how to push your buttons, they've installed them. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> that that's resonated good with me. You know what's even wow. Credit to whoever the hell yeah. told me that. Yeah, that's worse a good one. I'm not giving her Mosey credit, but I know he didn't. You know what, though? I will tell you, there's been plenty of buttons I installed myself for right. others to push. Good and point that's, too. and the, I mean, it, go, it works the same way. That is definitely, and when I go back in that environment, it's almost like you open that locked door of the room that has all the, um, what's the word, I'm, you know, what I'm talking about? Like, codes, the secrets. The... Not the secret code. Yeah, it's like. Uh, the monsters. <laughs> no, it's all the buttons. It's like the, the Monsters, no more <laughs> monsters in your closet. No more. The control room. The bed, yes. Just the, the control room. Yes. The control room. Stop it. If you just be quiet, Dave's got me. Yeah, the control, control room. Control room, people. Exactly. Close it up. Wizard All box. right.
Wizard All right, let's give away some money. You want to give away some money, Dave? Yes. This is I the funnest part money. of the show. Yes, this is the end we of the show. We love this. Everybody gets fired up. We're going to draw three names. I'm going to get my color back here. I know Where what is happened. That? I don't here, know. Here. Like this is going down. There we go. Oh, yeah, I don't know why that was like that. Perfect. All right, everybody. All right, everybody. Make sure that you're ready. You're locked and loaded. You oh, have our, you're right are right there. Yeah, people are ready to win. Yeah. There's the digital canasta. Somebody you're said, gonna... canasta. Trevor said. <laughs> <laughs> Tre <laughs> this got on there. You started three times. Like, oh, canasta. Nice. Uh, Trevor <laughs> said, my kids must have found the operation manual. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> That's so good. All right. All right. What do we got? Let's James go. Taylor was the winner last week after Whoa. he claimed. Over and over, every week he claimed and cried that his name wasn't huffed. in there. He never saw his name. Yeah. Turns out he, he won. won. Um, you can't. His name's back in there. You can go back to back. Can you imagine you can, if James Taylor went back to I back? I would quit James the show. James Taylor, I would if you quit the show. I fell back, asleep at the spear. You're jumping that money back <laughs> the yeah. He's not going to win. He's not going to win because Dave's here tonight. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He, and he posted it, I think. Oh, <laughs> oh, my I think but he did show him. He yeah, did he did. Him. Wow. All right, Luke. Right. Here Again? we go. Luke, Luke, number one. Luke feels like a mountain man, they say. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Voice out, Lauren That's Clum. cool. Woo! David Whoa. Steven. All right, David. David You're on the clock. You're on the clock. 30 seconds. Here we go. Yeah, go the chat, right? Dave, yep, he's yeah. got to show up in the chat. He yep. has won $300. Now he just has to claim it. David Stevens, you are the winner. Three hundred dollars. We're just waiting to see That's if you like claim. It. Two minutes of Julie playing the. Oh <laughs> yeah, not even. Last night, last night, Julie she lost, set a record. Like, she lost hundred 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 hundred. And then, and then I realized it was possible. Oh, exactly. David <laughs> Stevens David realized Stevens. it was possible. She broke the four minutes of the three hundred dollar <laughs> limit. <laughs> well, I mean, oh, we, we, it's not that he's. David, lost. you're still a winner. Yeah. You just weren't he just able to claim, claim the prize. Yes. So now you have lovingly passed it along to somebody else. Yes. Yes. Next, I next love the message by showing up so important. It yes. is. It is. All right. Next All right. name. Here we go. Look for your name, everybody. Here we go. Not JT. Yeah, not JT. <laughs> oh, we saw oh. Grant Dennis. Oh, oh Philip. Philip. Philip Grindle. All right. You are the big winner. Three hundred dollars coming out of your chat, baby. Come on, Come Philip. On, Come on. Let me do thirty seconds over. We, we, well, uh, you know we, what? We, we, we had one we week we had like... to go to instant replay. We, yes. we, we had to go okay. to. We had to go. We went VAR. Somebody got called. Yeah. Fake number two, JT said. Oh, come He's on. Back on the fake JT's back on the fake oh, name tree. Oh, God. <laughs> God. Too bad, Philip. So close. You had $300 right in your hand and then uh -huh. it went away. Yeah, All right, last people are eating dinner. What's that? Like yeah, there, Last name. You guys know how this works. So if the the prize Phil is not Luke claimed Kendall. on the, if the if the prize is not person. claimed here, then we're going to go next week to four hundred dollars and four names. Yeah. So this is a big That's, one. Wait, right I gotta here. say one thing. Do you guys think Luke looks like a Philip Grindle? <laughs> yeah. He does look like Philip. Hello, Philip. <laughs> <laughs> Cat lover. <laughs> Cat lover. <laughs> Oh, All right, Luki, make this one right, super make special. Good. Make it good. Here we go. Here we go. Digital Canasta. I saw Matt Musgrave. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, Jay Taylor. I did too. Cam oh, Daniels. Oh. Okay. Cam. Cam Daniels. Come on, Cam. Cam Daniels. Cam Daniels. Cam Daniels. Cam Daniels. Cam Daniels. Sometimes he's here. Oh, boy. <laughs> Come on, Cam. Cam. I saw Grant Dennis's name. Oh, I know. I Cam saw Cam. 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 And then Cam. I saw Cam, Cam. Daniels. This is going to be a sad This is going to be close. Cam. 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 Nope. Come on, Cam. Oh, oh, oh no. Like, oh, we all know. I'm coming oh, next no. week. Man. I'm going to watch oh, next week. No. Put my name in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jeremy, Jeremy Hamley said he's white Cam. He's a white version of Cam. <laughs> Cam, Cam. You, oh, you guys should have seen man. Jeremy on, on the call the other day. He was styling. He had the fit. Jeremy, I, I, I wish we could bring you in here. Right? Yeah. Jeremy, here was, look, he looked. Great, he's wearing an hair and clothes. Uh, I was really oh, thinking, I was really thinking Cam was going to be on. No, and the specific Arkansas is on, that's where he works. He's fired, but he's not there. He's, he's not, not there. Fired, he said so. he, and he lost his job. He, he healed somebody, he lost the money, he lost his job. 300 volts, you ain't got no Wait. job. Four minute mile, four minute 300. Game. There you go. You know, what? next week we're going four good. names. Four hundred dollars. Roger Bannister episode four. Yeah, four. Number four. Hey, do you, did you guys enjoy Jack today's Borla show? Jack Borla identifies as Kim. No, so he does he get to win? No, there's, no. A lot, there's nothing. Sorry, Jack buddy. Borla. Sorry, Jack. There's nothing Sorry, Cam Jack. about Jack Borla. There's nothing. <laughs> Our like heads, heads are falling off. Listen, it's been a day. 
But we had three names, three winners that didn't claim their prize. So we hope to see you next week for $400. Yeah, and, and it will be the eve of SRP. So we're going to be broadcasting Ooh. live from Dallas, Texas at SRP. The next day we kick in VIP day. We yes. have special Why guests. For that? No, you, oh, you probably no, you're, yeah, yeah, you're speaking to Tucson day. first. And then we, look out for a new show. Well, we have, you know, yes. what's coming out um, VIP day. We have Kyle Draper and Al Herrera stopping yep. in. Yeah. Oh yeah. Local, then, local yeah. hero. And then yeah. we have, Talk about identity yeah, yeah. So then we have, <laughs> then we have David Meltzer, Ryan Stuman, Michael Port, two full days. Three days if you're VIP. And I'm coming yes. prepared, everybody. Everybody, preparation. Prepared. And then we're gonna we're gonna launch our show soon. We're yeah, gonna yes. watch for the over. show. We're gonna figure that out. Figure out oh, can you guys submit start names it. for us? We're looking for a good name of the show. Yeah, oh, yeah. we need to know. Submit name. And it you can't heard of LSD? Lacey, Sean, and Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Join us for LSD. Trip out with us. LSD trip. Yeah, yeah. Trip. tripping on LSD. Tripping with us. LSD. 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 That could be good. Tripping LSD, on LSD live. <laughs> LSD live. We can have all the graphics, the trippy, yeah. like, yeah. Oh, yeah, we'll do those. I can change my name to Nancy. We could be SNL. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's I taking new it. names. I know. But yeah, give us some good names. We're, we're here for it. So, all right, everybody. All right, everybody. Watch next week, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Sean and Lacey live. Until then, good night now. <laughs>